Hey, what's up guys? My name is Acheno and welcome to episode 86 of Game Programming. So, over the last three episodes, we created um, some sprites, some new sprites, right? And among them was uh, the player, of course, the brand new player, which looks like this. And, um, and as well as a bunch of tiles, which I haven't actually exported out of After Effects yet. But, um... We want to now obviously check out what these tiles look like in our game. But the thing is, I stumbled upon um, this player sheet here and it's all cool, right? It's ready to be an animated sprite. But the thing is, our game right now, as I look at all the code, the way that we have de defined our players here is really kind of stupid. Isn't it? No, it's, not, it's okay. Let me take that back. It's not stupid, okay? It's absolutely not stupid. It's just not the most efficient way of doing it. Um, it is efficient. Um, it's just not, I'm kind of going back on everything I'm saying, aren't I? What I mean is that this is, this is quite a, quite a bit of work. Okay. Right now we have nine sprites that we want to deal with, right? Sorry, 12 sprites. Okay. Three for each direction. Now, the problem with this is we're going to need 12 sprite declarations here. That's a bit, um, there has to be an easier way of doing this, right? There is. Okay, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, over the next two episodes, this one and the next one, we're going to talk about actually making an animated sprite class that will be able to handle this for us. Because right now, if I just close every other tab we have in Open Player, um, you'll see that uh, based on the direction that we're walking here, it simply changes the sprite to another sprite. Okay? Um, and it actually does the animation by itself here. And that's fine. Okay, that is, that's a fine way of doing it. But um, we can obviously automate this process and make it a bit more universal rather than having to type this out for every mob, for example, um, and copy and paste all this code. So that's what we're going to cover over the next two episodes. Now, for this episode, we're going to talk about specifically a sprite sheet. Now, the reason we're going to talk about sprite sheet is because I want to make something called a sub sprite sheet, essentially. So we have this sprite sheet here. Right, But the thing is, for our front walking animation, for example, if we're walking down, we want to use only this first uh, column here, right? We don't want to use everything. We just want to use the first column. So how can we divide this sprite sheet into a smaller sprite sheet is essentially what I'm saying. Um, now, there are several ways we could do this. Um, the way that we kind of do this right now is we, we launch all these tiles here as a 256 size sprite sheet and we deal with that the way it is, but what I want to do is actually make a um, a sprite sheet that that's, that's like a sub sprite sheet of a sprite sheet. So I'm I'm trying to think of a clever name for it. Um, uh, I guess we could just leave it as a sprite sheet, couldn't we? Um, okay, that's fine. So we'll make a private stat. Oh, we might as well make that public. We'll make a public static sprite sheet called uh, player. Okay, and we'll set that equal to new sprite sheet. And it's going to, the parameter is going to be uh, textures, sheets, and player underscore sheet dot PNG because player underscore sheet dot PNG is our file name here. Um, and of course, the size here is not going to be uniform. It's going to be, what is this, 128 by 96. Okay, just like that. Now, because we, we haven't defined a non-square constructor here, let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to essentially copy this constructor, paste it in here, um, except instead of in size, I'm gonna change that to int width and int height because we're going to set uh, that stuff manually. Now, because of that, we're, got, we're also gonna need a public final int width and height. Whoops. So two constants here. Um, for over here, width is going to equal size and height is going to equal size because um, of course that is actually correct. <laughs> um, and for our new constructor though, let's make sure that we um, first of all set this.path equal to path. Also make sure that we actually load our sheet from the path. Uh, let's set size equal to negative one since it's not square. So in other words, if we get negative one, we can see that we've got something wrong here. Uh, let's set width equal to width. So we'll set the constant width over here equal to this width, and we will set height equal to our height parameter. Okay, just like that. Um, also, don't forget to set pixels equal to new int width times height. Okay, cool. Now we've got a sprite sheet that is not square, and we can load that. Um, what I want to do now is actually make a third a third constructor. Okay, so we've got two right here. I'm gonna make a third one, probably put it up here. 
and it's actually going to take a sprite sheet as a parameter. Whoa, what's going on here? Um, I'm gonna call it sheet. That's right, it's gonna take a sprite sheet as a parameter. And what it's going to do is also specify, um, let's, uh, let's do it this way. Int x, int y, int width, and int height. Okay, um, I'm thinking that's probably a good way of doing it, yeah. Okay, so what we'll need to do here is actually sp specify, this is like a, a sub-sheet here. We, we, have, we actually have to specify a sheet and then what, what section of the sheet we want to crop out. Um, now, because this might be a bit uh, difficult, we'll also make a sprite size uh, variable here. So, I'll call it sprite size. Um, okay, cool. So, what we want to do now is... Um, actually uh, get um, the X and Y here. Let me just think how I'm gonna do this. So we wanna make a new, obviously Pixels is now um, its own instance here and that's fine. Um, so we wanna make sure that, well, since, since um, let's make sure that we actually redefine X here because uh, let's change this to X times, uh, sorry, X times sprite size. Um, because of course we'll be specifying it that way. Um, we'll need to uh, change all of these. So I'll make YY, I'll make uh, W for width and H for height. Um, and this is going to be, the width is, um, we don't need to do that, do we? Hang on, I'm just thinking. No, we do, okay. So width times sprite size and height times sprite size as well as y times sprite size. Okay, so now we've got all those variables, we need a for loop that will actually extract the required pixels here. So for int i equals zero, i is less than, um, oh sorry, we can't use that. Uh, int y equals zero, y is less than, for now, we'll just deal with, um, we, we'll change this, we'll change this radically in a minute. I just wanna get the basic for loop down. Um, and we'll make it uh, nested, of course. We'll make X as well here. Whoops. Um, so X is less than width, um, X plus plus. Okay, cool. So now we've got this sorted out. Um, this isn't gonna work. Let's call this, uh, man, this is annoying. Um, I'll just call this Y zero, I guess, and X zero. Because um, our original names are taken by the parameters here. Okay, cool. So this will uh, essentially just extract the width and height that we want. Now we could, um, yeah, okay. So what we need to do now is actually make a Y variable here. So we are really running out of space here. YP, Y position, right? And that's just gonna be essentially YY. Okay, simple as that. Um, and uh, we'll do the same for X. So X position is going to be XX but make sure that it's not just YY, it's actually YY plus Y0, because that's where we're up to vertically. And um, this is XX plus X0. All right, so that's um, that's that's looking pretty good right now. So now what we wanna do is take our current pixels, right? Make sure that we do actually initialize it. So pixels is going to equal new int. Um, essentially, it's going to be uh, let's see here. So if the width is, no, it should just be width, um, width times height times H. Okay. Because that of course is the width and height of our, uh, pixels here. That's not offset that this is the offset here. Okay. That is the actual absolute width and height. It's not an X one and Y one kind of coordinate. Um, so pixels, uh, pixels XP plus YP times um, our actual width here, which is just W, uh, is going to, oh no, sorry, my bad. Make sure that you use the um, original, uh, the for loop things here. Um, and width isn't gonna do it either. This should be, sorry, this should be width and um, height. So basically what I've got going on here, in case you guys aren't really following, following along here, width and height is not gonna be specified in pixel precision here, it's gonna be specified in pretty much sprite, sprite precision. So if, um, if we wanna take the, uh, let's just say we wanna take the two sprites across, we would put the number two here, okay? And that will take the two sprites on the X axis. Now this W is in pixel precision because we're multiplying it by the size of our sprites. So because we wanna extract the pixels, we need to make sure that we are using our, um, all of our pixel precision stuff in our for loops. 
So pixels x zero plus y zero times width is going to actually equal sheet dot pixels at now this time xp plus yp, right? Times our sheets width, which is sheet dot width. Okay, simple as that. Um, so now that we've got that going on, that's pretty much it, right? What we want to do here is also specify the width to be W, the height to be H, and the size to be negative one, since it's not going to be square. Um, well, let's see, it could be square, but... Um, we could say over here, just in case, just in case we did want to use size somehow. So we could say something like if... Um, if uh, width actually equals height, right? Then a size equals width, else uh, size equals negative one. Yeah, essentially in width equals, if, if, if width does equals height, we'll set, um, we'll set size equal to width. Otherwise we'll just set size equal to negative one, which is what we do in case we're not a square, okay? Because that's how we roll. Okay, so what this method should now do, right? is essentially extract a particular sheet from a sprite sheet. So the way that we're going, the usage of this is going to be public static sprite sheet player down, okay? And this is actually gonna be a sheet of his down animation, which is going to be at this current point, these three uh, sprites, okay? So uh, player underscore down equals new sprite sheet. Um, and we're actually going to use player as a parameter, x and y are gonna be zero, width is going to be one, and height is going to be three, okay? And the sprite size, of course, is 32, okay? That, those are the parameters that we need. Now, how do we know if this worked or not? That is um, one of the question questioninos here. We could um, test it using an elaborate method here, or we could just simply uh, draw this pixel array. Um, now, we do have a way to draw a pixel array, I believe. If we go if we go into our screen class real quick, this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, so we have uh, we have render we have a render sprite, don't we? Um, what I want to do quickly, just for the purposes of testing this, this is really good for debugging as well, is render sheet. Okay? And this will just render a sprite sheet instead of a sprite. Um, now you guys might be like, why on earth are you doing this? And it, it does have as it does have its usages. Um, but it's awesome for debugging. Okay. So there's no get height method, but there is a, uh, width, uh, sorry, height. Um, we'll also go sheet dot, uh, width here. And of course we'll go sheet dot pixels, which is a nice method here and sheet dot width. Okay, just like that. And that should render our sheet. So if we go now into our game class and over here in our render, um, what we can type now is simply a um, screen dot render sheet. Uh, let's just pop it at like 40, 40. And just to test this out, let's first uh, make sure that we do a sheet that does work. So for example, our um, just our normal player. Yeah, fix will set to false, okay? Because we don't we want it to float around. Um, so let's launch this. And what we should see here is, as you can see, our entire player sheet. Now let's substitute this and type in a sprite sheet dot player underscore down, okay? And if we launch this, what we should see is, as you can see, just the just that section of the of the sprite sheet. And now what we should be able to do next episode is play around with this in terms of um actually making it animated and making a class that can handle animation by itself, no matter what sprite shape we feed it. So um, I hope you, I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode of game programming. If you did, please hit the like button. Um, now, in terms of likes, if we hit 300 likes, I'm gonna release two episodes tomorrow. You know, same deal. If, I, if we hit 200 likes, I'm going to release one episode tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll probably take a little break, to be honest, because um, I'm actually kind of thankful. We only, I think we only reached like 250 likes for yesterday's episode, which is, um, I'm, I pretty much breathe a, a sigh of relief there because it's, I got home today at eight o'clock. It's 8.21 right now. I literally just got home at eight o'clock from university today. And I have like three assignments due next week, as well as one due like tomorrow. So 
I don't know, I'm really busy. But the thing is, if you guys like these videos, like that just motivates me to manage my time a lot better. So it's not that I don't have time, it's just that I like to procrastinate a lot. But um, yeah, so thanks for all the support, guys. Um, that really does help me out. And um, other than that, guys, I'll see, I'm pretty sure this episode will reach 200 likes. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Later, guys. Thank you.